So mining in Europe. Mining, typically the first region that comes to people's mind is not Europe. And when thinking of Europe, the first industry that comes to mind is not uh, mining. Um, still, we're going to talk about mining and Europe here and concretely along a couple of myths and perceptions that are uh, widespread. First, Europe, a slow growth environment, economic growth is happening somewhere else. Second perception, European economies are diverging for, uh, from each other, increasing the risk of economic disruptions. Thirdly, Europe is heavily indebted. Greece, Ireland has been uh, all uh, over, uh, and, and their debt levels have been all over over the last couple of years. Concerns about Italy and other uh, economies are, are very, very present. Fourth, European mining is small uh, in a global context. Therefore, Europe is not relevant for the global mining industry. And fifth, the few, the little mining that exists in, in Europe is high cost because of high labor cost, high energy cost, and challenging, um, challenging geology. As always with myths, myths and perceptions, not all of this is entirely wrong, but it's worth to have a bit more granular look at the details. These, uh, what you see here in graphs is the economic growth rates for a few uh, selected geographies in the world. And as you can see, um, we are currently living in very good times, very good economic times. For the first time in, an, in approximately a decade, uh, all regions, all larger economic regions in the world are growing. More recently, looking at the details, and there you can see uh, or uh, the, the line's a bit better, uh, Europe has been growing pretty strongly, more than the other large developed economies, which are Japan and the US, um, which has not always been the case, especially in comparison to the US, um, certainly not as strong as uh, many of the, uh, the emerging economies. Overall, not not a bad picture and the outlook remains pretty positive. On diverging economies, clearly true after the introduction of the euro, um, the, uh, the euro economies, there has been a lot of divergence here, the largest four economies in the eurozone, uh, labor costs in Germany rising slowly, very fast in the other three economies. Uh, as an effect, as one effect, um, current account deficits with these two, in these three countries, very strong current account surplus in, in Germany. But in the last couple of years, actually, they have been converging. Uh, if economic poli policies remain as there are, uh, we can foresee further convergence, so a decreasing risk of economic disruptions in the Eurozone. Then, debt on the left-hand side. You see across the world, here Europe and the US, interest rates have been decreasing despite all predictions of uh, increases. They're at a very low level uh, today. As an effect, across the world, huge amount of debts have been accumulated. Where does st Europe stand here? See a wide range from Italy to Sweden, 132% to 41% of government debt uh, relative to the GDP. Greece is not even included here. Um, but compared, again, to Japan and the US, the average uh, of the European debt level is is lower, and that's the, the case here for the government, public debt. The picture is even more clear if you uh, add private debt uh, to it, and also given that because of the current account surplus that the Eurozone has, um, it's the risk of a currency crisis because of the high debt levels uh, is, is pretty low. So overall, a, a 
pretty positive picture. Uh, what, what risks remain? There are political and economic risks. Um, with the e political risks, probably the, the, the more severe ones for the further development of the European economies. Um, on the economic side, further di divergence, relatively low risk. Um, if, uh, if most countries continue to, to implement sound economic policies, um, as you can see, the large e economies are actually converted. Um, the other bigger economic risk is strong interest rate increases. Very unlikely that this is, will be triggered outside of Europe. If uh, interest rates uh, increase strongly, it will be coming out of other economies with spillover effects to Europe. But the impact of that, because of the, the higher debt levels, uh, will be more severe in other geographies. And on the politics side, trust is probably the most important challenge that European-friendly leaders do have trust of the um, European population in the EU. European Union and the institutions. In a recent survey, one illustrative example, in a recent survey, 20% of the German population uh, said that having a strong leader who doesn't bother about uh, parliament and elections would be an effective way to govern the country. A pretty shocking number, given the history, the German history, where we have tried that before and were not successful. The other more um, external factor are global disruptions, which could have very severe impact on Europe. And that includes a wide range from trade wars to military conflicts um, that, um, that could severely affect the European economies. But overall, economically, a pretty positive picture that, that we are seeing. Now specific to mining. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, so maybe to put a little bit of mining touch on, the, on Europe and connect Europe and mining. So first of all, to take a step back and think about mining economy, uh, we see uh, for the coming years after a couple of complicated years between 2007 and 2015, we see definitely mining revenues uh, picking up in the coming years. So this is about revenue when it comes to a bit the basket, so margin basket, we see an increase as well, but not at the same rate. So basically we expect some pressure on, uh, on margins in, in coming years. So this is about global basket. When you think about Europe, it's obviously a relatively small portion of it. Um, can we conclude that Europe is relatively insignificant uh, related to mining industry? Well, it's not that simple. So what we try to do, um, what we try to do is to think about the percentage of supply coming from Europe or actually controlled by Europe. So when it comes to production centers and sourcing from Europe, the relative, the relative amount of production is relatively small compared to the, to the global output. So we took iron ore and copper as typical commodities really, uh, linked to, Europe, to Euro mining in Europe. And maximum 5% is sourced from, uh, is sourced from, uh, from Europe for, for copper. When it comes to control, uh, if we take European-based company or European-owned company, actually the percentage of supply is increasing until 25%, which actually another way to say it is Europe has the control of 25% of the, of the overall copper supply. What does it mean from a performance standpoint? So the exercise that we did is to plot the, the, the relative positions of the mining assets on the overall cost curve. So it's uh, one of the proprietary cost curves that we developed in-house. And I mean, a couple of things based on that. Um, first of all, we often, I mean, to come back to the initial myth, European high cost uh, is not that simple. So we see a huge variability of performance across either European-based asset, either European-controlled assets. And even though some of those mines might be in the marginal producers, we 
We also see some European assets performing pretty well on the lower, on the lower side of the, of the cost curve. Small comment, we might, I mean, for, for, so, for some of you, it might be surprising to see some cost negative operation. This is typically, for, uh, this is typically the case when we see operation highly affected by, by products. We take this example uh, in the RC, performance of the or, or the performance of the mine on the copper cost curve is heavily impacted by cobalt, uh, cobalt commodity. When we do a double click now, so this is the overall cost performance of the mine. If we do a double click and we look on mining productivity, uh, we use here a mining productivity index, which is basically an index that we created to uh, to assess the performance of the operation from a productivity standpoint by using four parameters, combining four parameters, capital productivity, operating cost, labor base, and, pro and production throughput. We basically see that for the last 10, 15 years, the mining productivity has declined globally, but started to pick up since a couple of years now and some European assets, so we took one specific example, is actually outperforming uh, the global productivity. It's actually performing way better than the global productivity trends. It is interesting just to understand why. So, um, as I was saying, four parameters, capital productivity, I will put that aside, but operating cost, labor base, and production, it's interesting here is to see that this specific European asset managed to become more and more productive with the year, not, not with uh, impacting labor base, which is ob obviously one of the biggest drivers that we think about when it comes to productivity, but by increasing production while maintaining its operating cost. Basically, there are a couple of good and uh, successful stories to be noticed within European mining and And to finish on the, on the couple of myths uh, that, uh, that Stefan presented earlier, um, again, not that simple and not that straightforward. So Europe is actually growing. And to some extent, com in a comparable way versus other developed economies. Not a lot of divergence. I mean, obviously, we saw a lot of divergence after the introduction of Euro, but actually the European economies are starting to converge now, at least to get closer to each other. The different risks that Europe is facing are largely due to external factors. And from a mining point of view, first of all, it's a very relevant uh, region. And secondly, the uh, European mines doesn't mean not competitive markets. We have actually good success stories in Europe. And, uh, and, uh, and this, is, uh, this is something that we, that, that we see more. Thank you very much.